Hello everyone and welcome to the second and final round at the 19th annual Fairhope Jubilee. We're here at the Fairways of Fairhope in Fairhope, Alabama, bringing you the action. Our leader, Chloe Alice, out to a big lead, four strokes over Paige Pierce. Then we have Madison Walker, just one stroke behind Pierce. Amelia Marshall comes in at plus two. And wrapping up the card, Tina Oakley and Dustin, we saw what they did in the front nine. Now they're going to start kind of in the middle of the course. And man, Chloe, four-stroke advantage over the five-time world champ. Yes, very true. As uh, we are on hole eight again, this was in the short right position in the first round. Now it's going to be in the long left position. So a trickier shot for sure as we watch uh, Chloe lead things off. And Again, worth noting that Paige did play the first round blind, had never been at this course before, so it was kind of just, you know, kind of turning things around, just trying to figure things out on the fly. And so this time around, she'll be a little bit more aware of what she's after. Yeah, and then, as we just said, starting out on a hole, there's three of them, eight, 10, and 14, that have slightly longer pins. And Madison Walker, well, she's wow. been here before, and she knows right where that long pin is. Yeah, she absolutely pured that. This is very difficult to get the birdie on, that is for sure. Again, just like many other holes at uh, Fair Fairhope, it is very narrow corridors, not a lot of breathing room if you get off of the fairway. And uh, yeah, Madison did a great job here. And most of our players are at least trickling down and give themselves a chance to approach for par. And you can also notice here, Terry, that it is very windy. The wind became more and more of a factor as each minute passed as uh, you know, the weather just got a little bit rougher throughout the day. Yeah, we somehow avoided rain, which felt like it was imminent, but the rain continued to push back. And in exchange for that, we got plenty of wind, which you're hearing and seeing right now. Tina pinched up, trying to go with the forehand. Yeah, wind is not really letting that one get back but uh, still might have a little bit of a lane as we're going to see Paige here. A rare touch forehand. I believe that's with one of her putting putters. I believe that's with the fear. So this is going to be a very touchy forehand. Let's just try to navigate through some of these trees and just get up to the basket to give herself a par put look. And unfortunately, that's going to catch an early tree and leave her a very long bid. Here's Amelia, otherwise known as Emmy. When I was introduced to her, we... Certainly noticed in round one, very heavy influence from her ultimate days. Yeah, she's a Virginia transplant. I believe she went to school at LSU and uh, probably did ultimate there as well, I'd imagine, and uh, has moved to the Mobile area for work and is starting to get into the scene. This is only her sixth sanctioned event we discussed in the uh, first round. So, you know, still very inexperienced, but definitely has some talent and cool to see her out here. Well, and to see her one stroke off uh, of Madison Walker and just two off the pace of a world champ uh, tells you that she certainly is getting her disc golf game dialed in. You know, maybe not world champ status just yet, but the fact that you're within two of Pierce after a round of golf means you're probably doing something right. Yeah, let's look at this little window that Paige is going to have to putt through here to try to get the par. Steps it very close bid, but not quite. Looks like she's going to have to settle for a bogey on this one. That is a solid putt. Unfortunately, it's for bogey, but uh, that's exactly what she's going to see from Pierce. So looking to maintain that advantage. Madison Walker, however, still yet to get to her lie. Here's Tina. Yeah, and we saw this a lot, I feel like, in the first round where Madison was just really cruising through these fairways. Of course, she's now sponsored by MVP that was recently announced. But at the time of this event, it was a couple of weeks before that. So she was still maybe probably throwing some MVP plastic, probably had an idea that that was on the horizon, but still kind of playing a mixed bag at this tournament. That's why you're a little bit confused, but uh, she'll be throwing MVP from here on out. And talk about a momentum shift on the very first hole. She picks up the birdie. See that Chloe had taken the bogey. This is Emmy for her bogey. 
For a correction, that was for her par. And she's going to walk away with a bogey, and that's exactly what Paige is looking to salvage here is a bogey as well. So very first hole, Walker picking up potentially two or three strokes on everyone on her card. Yeah, you can see that uh, she might also take a lead over Paige here after this hole to kick off the round. But uh, still a lot of golf yet to be played. As, uh, this was a pretty tight field, all things considered. I mean, yes, Chloe did jump out in front, uh, you know, at the first round, but it wasn't crazy separation on the card. And with so many holes left to play, there could be tons of movement. Yeah, and also to lay it out there, they are playing two rounds of 19. So a little bit of a unique format, not only two rounds, but also the fact that it's 19 holes. And hi, Tina. Aww. Hi there. What do you have to tell the world, Tina? A awesome figurehead for disc golf. You know, entrepreneur has her hands in a lot of different aspects of the sport. Also owns a gardening company now out in Pensacola, Sun and Soil, I believe it's called. So, uh, really cool person. She said, "Do some practice putting." That is good advice for everybody. Walker, high <laughs> right route here on nine. Yeah, after playing hole eight. You know, this one feels like a little bit of a relief. You know, this is one of the easier holes in the wooded stretch. Just want to throw a gentle backhand high, so just have it fade towards the basket. You can maybe play something a little bit higher speed and try to play the skip. But this is one you really want to get. This is a very scorable hole in this wooded stretch. Well, that snuck through. Wow. See if Emmy can follow suit from what we just saw from Gears, and that barely misses the tree. I think that's going to be a long look at a birdie, but she stays clean on the drive. Yeah, but now we have Tina up here next, looking to try to navigate this fairway, and looks a little wide right, but it does come on back, so she may have herself a long look as well, and. If you watch the first round cover trip, P.O., she had a lot of very close calls from circle two. You know, a lot of metal drawn. So definitely waiting for her to finally capitalize on one of those. This is Chloe for par after the forehand doesn't have the right angle. And that is off the mark. So Chloe, a little bit of a slow start here looking potentially at back-to-back -back bogeys. Yeah, you have to imagine the kind of pressure she must have knowing that she's got, you know, coming in with a four-stroke lead against a five-time world champion <laughs> and she's breathing down your neck because she knows that she wants to win. So you kind of have to wonder what the mental, uh, you know, situation is there as uh, Paige very well could now gain two strokes on her. I believe she has yet to putt. Oh, nice putt there for Birdie from Emmy. Really well done. Oh, yeah, go get that. <laughs> hey, go collect your birdie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put that one in your pocket. That is nice also a really spot. cool jersey, by the way. I have to give that a shout out. <laughs> Here's Pierce for birdie. And just like that, she has shortened the gap by two to Chloe. And Madison now lining up. She's trying to open the second round here with back-to-back -back birdies. And she's successful. Wow. Yeah. You know, Madison is a player who has won this tournament before. I can't remember what year it would have been. Maybe like 2019 or something like that. Because I think Tina won it in 2020. Uh, you know, but the they haven't played this course in a couple of years probably. And things have changed a bit since then. Especially with the construction. So... We're going to have some familiarity on the course, but also some changes there being faced with as we see Tina tap in the par. Madison might even be a two-time champ out here. She doesn't live too far, uh, just about an hour from this course. She's over in the Pensacola area. Of course, this is taking place in Fairhope, Alabama. Walker connects left side tree, and then a couple of bounces later, We'll have to see what kind of work she has left. Uh, of course, this one very similar to hole eight that they started the round on. And also, this one got pushed back uh, yes. about 60 feet. 
Yeah, I mean, a very challenging narrow corridor here. There is an option to go very wide left with a forehand, but it is very rare to see it used in tournament play. But as you can see, like this, this hallway stretches for a good 150 feet or more. And it, in this win, keeping a disc straight for that long can be tough. We know that Tina played the low skip in the first round with the, her signature trespass. So looks like she probably is looking to do the same thing here. Uh, but catches something early. Chloe after back-to-back -back bogeys. Oh, connects on the right side and that then kicks yeah. off the fairway. So still going to be trouble and nothing too clean here. <laughs> I'd say clean up on IL-10, but quite the opposite. I think we've got an official spill over here. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely one of the toughest holes on the course. You know, top three for sure. I think it played as the second most difficult for the round for these players. And also, it was a really tough hole for MPO as well, to be fair. So it's just probably one of the touchiest holes you play out here as far as just, you know, maintaining a line. And I think equally, I think recovery is the challenge here. It's one thing to hit the gap. It's another thing that, as you see, if you're out of position, you're probably just exhausting a stroke to get back out to the fairway. Yep. I would say the right side that Madison is on is a little bit more open to getting back into play. But as you can see, even she was forced to go for the forehand roller based on the angle that she was at and kind of gets up there a little bit. Might have a chance to still take a, a stab at it with a putt. Chloe also off on the right hand side. It's going to go with a forehand. And wow, that is that a great. great recovery. That'll at least give her a long look at saving the par. Yeah, yeah, now we, yep. yeah same right hand side. Again, I think this is the better side to be on. The left side is a lot thicker, as we saw, I think, Paige approaching from there earlier. So good job there from Emmy to get herself up to the basket. Maybe still have a chance to salvage something here as we see. Tina, I believe this is her third shot. Just trying to throw a little touch forehand up to the basket and try to at least walk out of here with a bogey. And that looks really well executed, actually. Nice job for Tina. Thanks. <laughs> Pierce's third. Oh, what? Draws metal. <laughs> oh, my. That would have been a heck of a recovery, but. Uh, she's l looking at a bogey. Chloe trying to save par with this. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We have had some close calls these last couple of shots. My goodness. That one just slides out. So Chloe opening with three bogeys. And Paige, however, you know, outside of the birdie on the previous hole, not able to take a huge advantage of Chloe's missteps. But... Plenty of golf to go. Here's Walker. And she'll tap in for the bogey. So she opens birdie, birdie, bogey. Not too shabby. We're starting to see everyone now kind of lick their wounds and just clean up this hole as, again, this is probably one of the toughest holes they're going to face this round. And so to get this one out of the way, come back. You know, not too scathed by it is uh, certainly good news. And Emmy for the lone par after the great recovery, and she's going to take the honors with a par here on 10. Yeah, that's a big par to get. It feels very much like a birdie because you're definitely getting strokes on the field as we say hi to Tina yet again. <laughs> Moving on to a uh, hole 11, which has your options. The low skip up the middle or this wide left turnover or forehand that you're seeing here from Emmy. But unfortunately, that's going to catch a tree and kick out. Yeah, she played a perfect flex shot in round one that put her no more than five feet from the pin. And we saw this play in round one. Mm -hmm. Madison forehand roller. She cut it too tight in the first round. This time left it a little bit wide. So we'll see. Last time she still had a putt at it. Here's Pierce. 
thinking she's off the mark, but then gets a late kick, and she might be right there looking at a birdie putt. Yeah, she pretty much parked that thing. I was back there on the catch cam and was really impressive to see that from my angle. It was, unfortunately, Tina is going to catch one of those trees, and that's the risk going out left. There's a lot of things that can hang you up early. As we're going to see Chloe go with the forehand, and she's going to go kind of up the middle, but then flex it left to right. And we don't see this, but I almost got wrecked by that disc. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, there was a log right in front of me. And thank Lord for its placement, because otherwise my ankles were gone. She smoked that disc. Well, I think Paige said as we were walking down the fairway, she said, oh, OK. So pick the line with the most amount of trees and then just go right through them all. Yeah. And that was uh, exactly what happened you there. Do whatever you're going to make it. Is the forehand going to go in? Nice bid. Had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> a little banter back and forth. Uh, when you follow and film for so many years, you develop these funny relationships. And uh, sometimes we, we like to have a good time when we're out there. As Emmy is not much of a lane, and she's just going to have to pitch it up and walk away with a par. And this is Paige with a fairly long birdie attempt here has a couple of trees to navigate as well puts it right to the middle takes a bit of a fall but the disc also falls into place and so that's a big birdie for Paige as Chloe was basically parked that's huge to keep position wow and you saw the slip even and it didn't seem to matter Pierce long birdie might be the longest putt we've seen so far today we'll see if that holds as uh, as such. Here's Chloe to answer. Oh, no. That stings. To have such a good tee shot, to watch Paige nail that birdie butt from distance, and now the best you can do is just stay on even footing with her. So Chloe will tap in and... That lead that was once four has dwindled to one after four holes. As Phil Collins would say, you can feel it coming. Certainly in the air tonight. I hear you. <laughs> Tina is in. I'm picking up what you're putting down. This is more the afternoon, but yes, the, that does work. <laughs> Emmy will... Tap in and Paige with the lone birdie takes the honors as they will head over to hole number 12. Hole 12, pretty straightforward, a little more open than the previous few tee shots, but Paige still finds that right high right side, which exact same miss she had in round one, this time with a slightly different disc. Also, I'm a very different caliber of player, but that is the same tree I hit both rounds as well. <laughs> like, it's tough because you're trying to kind of hug slightly to the right of the fairway to have that gentle fade left towards the basket. And if you just happen to yank it a little bit too much, you can definitely catch something early and get stuck. Luckily, I feel like as long as you can just kind of stay centered, you can usually still recover par on this hole. And there's also a bit of a backstop behind the basket. So it kind of opens you up to be able to you know, throw with a little bit more power and not really feel any repercussions if you kind of blow by the basket. Unfortunately, everyone finding trouble here. We'll see if Chloe and her forehand has the right combo and that hits a late tree as well. So really surprised to see the struggles. This hole feels at least twice as wide as the previous few fairways. But unfortunately, uh, no one gets all the way down to the pin. We saw a few of those in round one, but not here. And an outstretched Tina trying to make a great recovery, and it's exactly oh. that. What a beautiful forehand. She's had a couple of nice touch forehands for some of these approaches this round on those lower speed disc. We're seeing Madison try to match. Oh, no. But, oh, man, that got ricocheted. 
A little bit of forward progress, but not much for Walker. And another little forehand by Page. This is basically deja vu. I feel like this is a mirror <laughs> yeah. image of what happened the first round. You know, kick left, same exact touch forehand with the putter, but uh, going to get the same result too, it seems like. Probably going to be able to clean up par from that position. And this win, man, is just, again, a constant factor throughout the day that just got more and more severe. And it's going to be more impactful as we're about to start getting some more open holes. So Walker at best looking at bogey. Here's Emmy's second shot. And that looks like it'll work just fine for the three. Oh, oh what? Whoa. Off the chain. Doesn't quite get it to stick. And Chloe <laughs> with the... Uh, she knew how magical that was almost. Here's Walker. And she'll have to take the bogey. So not what you would expect after seeing her get birdie birdie on the opening two holes. And then we move on to a hole that's a little bit easier. And this is where she struggled. But Madison very much still in that conversation sitting at plus one. Emmy remains at plus two. Pierce is going to remain at even. And uh, Chloe as well still uh, should be at one under after this tap in. Yep. So what an incredibly tight field we have uh, with four of them all within two or three strokes of each other. Yeah, still very much anyone's game. You have to feel as once again, we catch Tina having a great time. <laughs> you know, good seeing her play again. I know it's a little bit harder for her these days between her garden company and whale sacks and working media. She has a lot of plates she's spinning. As we move on to hole 13, a very tough uphill 295, narrow corridor. Definitely played as one of the top five most difficult holes on the course for both divisions, really. But that's a great shot for Amy to keep her center fairway. Going to give her a great chance to approach with the par. And you'll take a par every day of the week on this hole. And that's beautiful as well. Great shot. <laughs> Looks like she got past most of the rough. And she'll have a little bit of obstruction between her and the pin, but should be an easy approach. And Chloe flirting with that tree on the right side, but gets past it and just a few feet off the fairway. Yeah, no big blunders so far. Everyone's made some good progress. And again, if you can play towards that right side, it leaves you pretty open to the basket for the approach as Madison... Puts up a nice one there. It does get a little bit caught up. But again, I, I don't think that she's in such a bad position that she couldn't still scramble for par. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Both the exact same time, the groan <laughs> of seeing that one tree she had to beat. She gets past that, and she's going to be right there next to the pin. Here's, oh no, and that same tree that Paige said she was trying to go around it. How is that one tree causing so much trouble? <laughs> We're getting, is that, uh, <laughs> is that her Bobby Brown disc or something? I know they have a cat. That's, uh, uh, yeah, she's uh, <laughs> showing off. Uh, they went back and forth as to what disc should be thrown. And then I guess when in doubt, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the one you got to go with. And she said she's been naughty lately. Uh, the desk. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, all right. Here's Walker forehand. Should be an easy up and down. And that's a solid approach for Madison. First time I've thrown good today. She says it's the first time she's thrown good today. I, I disagree with you, Madison. Dis but Yeah, very hard disagree. She's had some great backhands throughout the day. As we see Chloe pitch up as well here on 13. This is Emmy for a very long par attempt, I believe, after having that tree kind of catch her. Not a bad bid right over the basket. So she'll be looking at bogey. And Pierce, just about the same distance for her par bid. Ooh, just a little low it looked like, but definitely on track. Yeah, tough to tell. You know, you kind of heard the leaves rustling around. Not sure if she... Stop what? It. No. <laughs> no. That's uh, dirty. That's dirty. 
That's not yeah, fair. Yeah, it is not. Oh, uh, Tina, what we thought was a great par save is unfortunately going to result in bogey as it does for Emmy. As you mentioned, hole 13, not exactly playing nice here with the competitors on the FPO or MPO side. It it shouldn't be that hard. It's 300, slightly uphill, but when you get caught off it uh, uh, off the fairway, it looks like you've got plenty of work doing. Yeah, the other thing that is tough is there are some low-hanging branches that kind of block the putt if you're on the right side of the fairway. So there's a couple little banana peels out there that you could slip on on this hole, that's for sure. And the fact that it requires a little bit of extra distance, you know, you kind of have to push something a little bit harder, which can always affect your accuracy. So after playing some shorter holes, this one kind of could come up and make you have to really adjust as we now come to hole 14, island hole, now in the deep left position. And between the barking dogs and the wind, this hole is significantly trickier than normal. Yeah, and it's it's about 30 feet, but it, of course, plays to a even smaller section of the green, oh. the island there. That one just slides off too much for Chloe as it goes OB, and she'll go to the drop zone. Indeed. Madison laced this one beautifully in the first round. Can she match it here in round two? It looks so as long as it sticks. And yeah, that tree will keep her. And she has a birdie putt now. And that was really well executed. Oh, and Paige liked it. She said it was looking so good, unfortunately. That's going to kick her out into the OB parking lot. She'll go to the drop zone. I believe Emmy had a near park job during round one, if I recall. Is that and short? this one. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Again, the headwind on this hole was brutal, and you couldn't even really feel how strong it was from the tee. As we see Tina put one up there, and that's also going to drift left parking lot. So looks like the drop zone will have many visitors as we see some volunteers out there with the flags. Yeah, unfortunately, that drop zone is not the party you want to attend. We're going to see a little forehand flick up there, leaving it just a little light. You would like for that tree not to be in your way when you putt. Paige. Solid. All the way up there. That'll be a tap in bogey. Yeah, very stress free on that one see what tina can do here just tries to play the low skip up and will also be nestled by the tree and that will work as well the question is what uh what can we see from madison walker and what are the scores going to look like as tina's off the oh. Oh, that almost rolled OB deep, so I'm glad that yeah, didn't almost, roll back. You, you would play it normal OB rules from there, but she does stay in bounds and an outstretch from one knee. Chloe, that's a solid pressure putt to make, knowing that Paige is right there uh, looking at a bogey as well. Here's Walker for birdie. Oh, no. Yeah, I remember this. A gust of wind came right as she let go of the putter uh, and just wrecked her putt. It was so unlucky because she, you know, did a, such a great job off the tee. Looked like she had basically a tap in birdie and this unfortunate gust of wind really ruined that. And that's exactly what Tina is waiting on here just to make sure that the wind, if there's any calmness that she can take advantage of, a break and... She'll walk away with a double bogey. So Chloe remains at even. Pierce with the bogey. Or I'm sorry, Chloe went to even. Pierce with the bogey goes to plus two. Very tight battle here. So we're heading over to hole B. And this is a temporary hole. We saw a few mistakes made in round one. We'll see if they correct them. Madison leaked hard left in round one, and mm -hmm. she's left, but not quite as far left here in round two. 
that's one of the most common mistakes on this hole is just leaking left towards those bushes. It's tough because you want to stay away from the road on the right hand side because that plays as OB. It also plays deep OB behind the basket. And again, there is nothing stopping the wind on this hole from impacting your disc. It is wide open. It is ripping, as you can see. And uh, I think it was a crosswind at this point, a head cross of sorts. And I would also say the whole play is longer than 250. It plays closer to probably 275, 280. And Pierce had gone out of bounds in round one this time. Short, but certainly inbounds. That'll still give her a long look for birdie. And you can see the flag there on the screen as it, just like you said, a little bit of a, more of a head, but a little bit of a crosswind to it. Mm -hmm. And that is, can be brutal throwing straight into it as Emmy carries off to that left-hand side. Yeah, this is one of those holes where, unless you just have the most brilliant tee shot, you're just looking to play conservative and try to walk out of here with the par. As that's a brilliant shot from Tina. Gets a great skip. That was pretty much perfect. Yeah, low, you know, trying not to expose it and get the nose up, I think was so crucial here. Very smart chip up there from Emmy just to walk away with the stress free par. And speaking of crucial, over at uh, Flexline Pro, they were huge in helping us get all the footage as Madison gives that a bid, hits some metal, but stops. Uh, they had got both MPO and FPO action, and then in the reverse, we did the same. Thank you, Dustin, for working the camera as well. And uh, So make sure you go out, you like, share, subscribe, do all the stuff over there. Uh, those guys were great in collaborating so that we could give you this FPO and MPO feature and lead cards here on the channel. And page asking for it to stay up which is really you know says something about how low she must have been throwing it or her angle there knowing she was throwing straight into a headwind and it's still mm -hmm. you know dipped on her now tina saying hey just stop for a moment i want the birdie and she'll get it yeah she had a really good tee shot and it's great to see her be able to capitalize she's had a lot of close calls this tournament on some big putts and some abilities to score then she's able to Grab this one, the only birdie on the card. Everyone else at least able to avoid the big number. I think everyone else parred. So to be honest, they as a card handled this hole very well. Now what, Madison? <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's saying that the wind needs to go away. I don't know. Maybe she needs an attitude adjustment, Walker. All right, we're heading over 15. We've got just two left to play in this front half. And of course, scores remain very tight. Yeah, this is the second longest hole on the course, just at 350. Again, we had a bit of a crosswind going on, making this hole very difficult. You want to try to display more towards the right hand side if you can to avoid the downhill putt. As we're seeing everyone so far kind of be where you want to be. But this is another one of those holes where if you're not, you know, within 25 feet or so you're probably second guessing running the putt unless you're putting uphill then maybe you take your chances <laughs> you're an audible sigh as they walk off the tee knowing uh, what it's like throwing into this wind chloe a little bit more power trying to fight it but that's still gonna push off hard the left Yeah, again, this is a hole that normally doesn't scare you too much. Pretty straightforward, but in these weather conditions, you certainly had to think twice about how you wanted to approach it. But I feel like so far, everyone's handling it pretty well off the tee. I mean, a lot of them are probably just going to have to lay up for par, but, you know, no one's looking to really make a big error here. It looks like everyone navigated the fairway fine. Seeing the swirling wind and debating is it the marshal is it, well, okay we're gonna have a disc swap eric oakley there on the bag he did not compete uh, so if you're wondering why you didn't see him on the lead card uh a the mpo lead card is out playing right now and b he did not compete in this event so he was out there just caddying and supporting his wife great shot by the way from tina good call changing disc something more stable nestles it up there next to the basket gonna have a stress-free par now you see Madison look to 
Try to do something similar here. Just see yeah, that jump putt approach. Just trying to lay down, give herself an easier par putt. As I'm thinking about their drives, really on the last two holes, that would be the question for the disc golf community if you want to possibly win either some jerky or some discs. Tell me in the comments, what's your go-to stiff headwind disc? Let's assume it's a drive. What is that go-to stiff headwind disc? Dustin, what are, what are you throwing into a, a fierce headwind, so to speak? I'm digging the uh, Tournament X Sword from Erica Stitchcomb. It's okay. pretty good on headwinds, and if it's really bad, I might reach for a good old school Eric Oakley Lucid X Felon. All right, well, that's what I need to know in the comments. Of course, do all the YouTube things, like, share, subscribe, all that other stuff, but that's what I need to know is what's your go-to headwind disc? And a great putt there a moment ago from Madison. She'll walk away with the par. She's sitting in second place, and that one... Just gets in for Emmy. She sits at plus four. What about you, Terry? What's your headwind disc of choice? Wow. Um, the little bit I do play. Um, I have, as funny as it sounds, I have a pro wraith that flies a little more stable than an Excalibur. <laughs> wow. And, okay. Yeah. Big shout out to Flight Factory, along with all of the other sponsors of both the event and the coverage that you've been seeing. We're here for our final hole of the front half of coverage. Tina's right up the middle. Yeah, going up the gut is the common play here. Low ceiling you have to deal with, but otherwise pretty straightforward. Fence can kind of play as a backstop. Sidewalk is casual. It's only the road to the far right that would be considered out of bounds. The only thing you got to worry about is going maybe over the fence. And well, this one might actually look to do that. Oh my goodness, that's a rare one. You don't see that too often. No, and I'm I'm really interested by that player, intrigued by it because I saw it in round one where Chloe went out to the left and then tried to bring it back to the right and didn't go up the tunnel that you saw the other players go by. And I don't. I don't love that play, and I'm not just saying that because she went out of bounds, but I just don't really mm -hmm. love that angle or that play. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. things where if, if you don't feel comfortable keeping a backhand low, there is a route to kind of swing a forehand out to the left if you're a right-handed player. But, yeah, it, it usually is just a good idea just to go ahead and play up the gut, and this could cost her. You know, she still, I believe, has a two-stroke lead on Paige, and that might start getting erased here. And you see her pitch up right next to the pin. So at best, looking at bogey. Tina also right next to the pin. Should yeah, this could knot it up. In par. Yeah. Emmy, who sits at plus four, gives that a little bit of a stepper. And here's Madison. This is really all about a little bit about maybe the comfort of the fence, but also the wind and exactly how it's coming at her. Oh, oh. no, another one. She's been oh. robbed a couple of times, I feel like. Yeah, that certainly feels like it could have stayed in. She'll remain at plus one. And now Chloe will go to plus one. And just like that, I think we're going to see a tap in. One of those discs there is Paige's, which means Paige would go to plus one. So halfway through the round, not only is the four-stroke deficit erased, but we have a three-way tie for the lead, which is incredible. And they're going to start closing out. So Dustin, man, I, I was just going to say, I, I hope you're along for the ride. Clearly, there's going to be plenty of excitement and... Uh, we're trying to close out the Jubilee. Hope you'll join us for the back half. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining. We take another quick look at the scores here, seeing that Chloe, Paige, Madison, all plus one. 
Emmy's not out of it by any means. She sits at plus four. We're excited to bring you the back half. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you for the exciting conclusion of the 19th Jubilee.